Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about Nissan Versa. This particular one is a 2012 that a customer recently bought used. Now this particular one was about $14,000 when it was new. Customer just purchased it for $2,500. So, you're not going to find a Matrix in that price range. You're not going to find a Corolla or a Honda Civic. They are much cheaper to buy. There's no arguing that. Now, this particular one, well, it's in decent shape. We'll check out the mileage. It's got 111,992 miles. Starter up, starts right up. It's pretty bare boned inside. I mean, it's got enough leg room in the back. Hey, it's even got cruise control and horn works. Hey, it's got a little bitty trunk in the back, but you can flop the seats forward so it carries a little bit more. It's kind of a handy little car. And when we look under the hood, it's your typical Econo car. Got a little bitty four cylinder engine, but it does have a timing chain, not a belt in it. Normal setup, a decent working room if you have to do anything. Now this baby puts out 122 horsepower, so it's no race car, but considering the size of the vehicle, it still zips around decently. Transmission on this baby is a four speed automatic. Now it's a Jacko. Nissan owns Jatco, it's a Nissan. I'm not a big fan of Jatco transmissions, but this is a four-speed automatic, which is a decent transmission hooked up to this kind of powerless engine. If it had been a CVT transmission, I would have told the customer not to buy it because they have nothing but problems in the Nissans as they age. And since this thing's almost got 112,000 miles on it, that CVT would either be starting to go out or soon in the future would go out. But these four-speed automatics, they were decent when they're hooked up to a small engine like this that doesn't put out a lot of power to burn it out. Now comes the truth. We're gonna hook up the computer and see what it's like internally. Because you can't hide from the computer. Give the old Nissan a tap. Now as we go through, we can see there's an ABS fault and four faults on the body control module. So let's start with the ABS. Well, the ABS system has a problem with the sensors in the tires. They're not even reading the air pressure anymore as these things age. This thing's eight years old. The batteries wear out. So as long as you put air in the tires, just realize that the ABS system in this car isn't going to work correctly. It's just normal brakes without ABS. A lot of people will live with that. You could spend a lot of money changing all four sensors. Now, most people in an Econo car like this, they'll check the air pressure themselves. They're not driving 800 miles an hour. Now down here are the body control module has four faults so let's see what those are again they're wheel sensor codes if you don't care about that car structurally sound i'm amazed it didn't have any more problems i mean when i hooked this up to a mercedes you get 30 40 codes this just had five and they're all the same code not getting transmission from the wheel sensor so if it runs okay yeah you need to spend a ton of money on this thing you only paid 2500 bucks for it and it doesn't run bad at all and just for kicks here i'm gonna erase all of the codes and after our road test we'll see if any of them come back and lo and behold, driving just around the block. Hey, check it out. Stupid lights are already on, so if the customer doesn't want to fix this, <laughs> no big deal. Can run perfectly fine. Like I said, it's a decent Econa box car. You don't expect perfection in a car like this, especially when you buy it for 2,500 bucks. Now this thing has the normal Nissan clacking. The valve trains are a little bit loud on these relatively cheaply made engines, but it's nothing outrageous. Let's back it up and take it for a little spin. For a tiny little thing like this, it's got a little get up and go. Now I notice this has a little misfire when you take off, so I'm gonna check the spark plugs and stuff when I get back. And you can certainly feel bumps when you hit them on the road. I mean, this doesn't ride like a Lexus by any stretch of the imagination. You get clunks and stuff, but as an Econo box car, you know, it's a decent Econo box car. You hear the bumps, but I mean, hey, what do you expect from a little cheap car? Now, when you open the hood to look at the spark plugs, you're going to see why I don't like Nissan. Because the evil swines have the spark plugs hiding under the intake manifold. Now, I might be able to get one out to just check it, but to change them, you got to take the intake. So that's a big job. Well, at least pull one out and look at it. Got to take all this crap out of the way. I never designed these things with a moron. You gotta take all this out just to check one. Then we'll unbolt the ignition coil. It's got a little 10 millimeter bolt. Sure make it long enough. Man alive, these engineers, they're idiots. And then we want to get the coil out of the way. You have to squeeze it. Okay. There's the coil. Now we can check one spark plug at least. Take it in the spark plug hole and pull one out. 
We'll twirl and twirl and twirl. Well, now we need a magnet. Even that won't come out. So now I found a flexible magnet on a stick. Let's hope that'll reach it. Success. Now, as you can see, these are the original spark plugs. They're actually rather worn and they need replacing. All of them. And that's because the firing parts, they have corrosion on them and they're worn. So it's going to need all four spark plugs if you want it to run perfect. All right, the old air filter's dirty, so I'll put a new air filter. That'll help it some. It just snaps in. And it goes. So now you know the truth about a Nissan Versa. Decent knock-around car. If you buy one used cheap enough, just don't expect perfection. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Edie Malou. I got an 01 Honda Accord four-cylinder with 110,000 miles automatic. Whenever the car shifts at 50, it becomes significantly rougher riding and steering wheel vibration increases. Any thoughts? You're saying shifting. If it shifts and you start getting vibrations, unfortunately on that, it is your transmission starting to go out to weak point of the Honda Accords. Now, let's say it doesn't shift. You keep it in a lower gear, but you get to 50 and it shakes. Well, then it can be the tires being out of balance. It can be the drive shafts, CV joints worn where they're wobbling around. But that doesn't have anything to do with the gear actually shifting. If it has to do with the gear shifting, then it starts doing that. You got an internal transmission problem, and to rebuild one of those things, you're looking anywhere from $35 to $5,500. So, pray that it's just the CV shaft is worn. Mount somewhere that just the speed is doing it, not just that it's shifting gear. Because normally you're shaking because the tires are out of balance or you got a front end part worn, faster you go. But if it has to do with shifting, it's definitely in the transmission. Domingo Bonilla says, Scotty, I'm looking to get an Lexus GS 2013. What do you think of the all-wheel drive on them? Well, Toyota and the Lexuses, they make excellent all-wheel drive systems. My thing with that is, do you really need all-wheel drive? My mother lives in Buffalo. Got a Toyota Corolla front-wheel drive. Goes in the snow perfectly fine with just front-wheel drive. You don't really need all-wheel drive. And it snows a lot in Buffalo. But if you really want all-wheel drive, Lexus makes an excellent system. It's just you're going to get worse gas miles. You're going to pay more for the vehicle. Repairs are going to cost more money. Realize that. If you don't really need it, my advice is don't waste your money on all-wheel drive. Jesse Zavala says, are Infinity G35 good or do you recommend them? All right, you haven't seen me before much because I'm always talking about those things. As they age, especially over 100,000 miles, they become endless money pits. They have problems with the catalytic converters, both of them going out, costing a fortune. They have problems with automatic transmissions because they use those crappy Jatco automatic transmissions that Nissan makes. I am not a fan in the long run, but I've had many customers buy them new and they were happy enough the first 100,000 miles. The cheaper customers said, mm, after that, they became expensive. Expensive and the customers that bought them with 120, 130,000 miles used, they ended up hating them because they fell apart and cost a fortune. So, you know, you're really better off buying a Lexus. It's an overall better car and you can keep them for 20, 30 years, which you cannot do with those Infinities. Carlos Lazo Diaz says, What would happen if the engine bay fuse box got shorted out in the car? Well, then a lot of things wouldn't work. I'll give you a perfect example Chrysler's that make some of the worst electronics in the world these days, especially since Fiat took over. You got two companies known for electrical problems. Problems merging a lot of times their fuse boxes has certain relays that melt and they tell you you got to replace the whole fuse box well of course they're just ripping you off just like selling you the junk in the first place you could find the wires that go to that particular relay cut them under the box run new wires to a relay and just mount it somewhere else in the car next to it not inside because generally the entire fuse box doesn't get destroyed only certain sections and what you can do is see which sections are melted get those wires splice them together with a little fuse you can get individual inline fuses you can fix it that way anytime anything melts in a fuse box you're gonna have problems something's not gonna work horns not gonna work fuel pumps not gonna work whatever it operates JP says hey Scotty I got a 97 Toyota Camry 2.2 the cooling fans are always on from the moment the keys put it in the run till it's turned off have you seen it yo yeah I see it all the time the way the cooling fans work they work in two ways one when you turn your AC on they'll automatically turn your cooling fans on that's normal you expect that kind of stuff if it's on the whole time you have somewhere a short to power now commonly in those there's a sensor the coolant temperature sensor if that stays on it'll do that just replace that sensor it just screws off screws on very simple job you can buy one at AutoZone or wherever that should fix it 
Now, if it doesn't fix it, then generally you have a problem in either the wiring shorting the power or more commonly, the main computer has a problem in the circuit and it's keeping the fan turned on the whole time. That would be so expensive, you could live with that. It isn't gonna hurt anything. But try the sensor first, because that will often fix it. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.